much. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Elena Gare, and this is Dr. Well, you Samina. Can introduce yourself. <laughs> I guess. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Samina. Um, and today um, I'm going to ask <laughs> Samina a bunch of questions about PCOS. Um, this is really her area of special interest, mm -hmm. and so she's going to share some um, information that she knows as far as what PCOS is and what that disease means and kind of how we treat it as naturopathic doctors. Yeah. Um, and so we'll dive right in. So Samina, why don't you tell me what PCOS is? Okay. So PCOS is um, basically the um, actual definition is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, um, in order to be diagnosed with PCOS, you need to actually meet a certain criteria, and it's called the Rotterdam criteria right now. Um, they might change it um, in the future just because you don't necessarily need to have cysts on the ovaries to have PCOS. So you need to have two out of the three of the following. So the first one is you need to have um, irregular periods. Mm -hmm. um, the second one, or like not being able to ovulate. Second one is you have to have clinical signs of high um, testosterone. So that means like signs and symptoms like acne maybe, or um, just hair growth on the body, and then, or a lab test showing that you have high testosterone. Um, and then the third one is that you need to actually have a cyst on the ovaries for it to be um, positive. Now, you can only need to have two out of the three of these to say that you have PCOS. So a patient could have clinical signs of high testosterone and irregular periods, and then they would be diagnosed with PCOS. So it's really important to understand that even though it's called polycystic ovarian syndrome, you m might not necessarily need the cyst on the ovaries to have it. Okay. And I actually wanted to like um, say to uh, before we move on is that um, PCOS is a syndrome, so it actually affects many different areas of our body. So it's really important to figure out, you know, where is the PCOS coming from? A lot of times I think of it and I tell patients it's an endocrine disorder, meaning it's it really impacts the hormones and not only the hormones, but the um, immune system as well. So it's really important um, to check that out and see if that could be something that could be um, influencing your PCOS. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying that if a patient is presenting with some of those other symptoms like the hair growth, um, irregular periods, um, or trouble conceiving, mm -hmm. um, and the poly and assist on the ovary, they may also have trouble with their immune system. So kind of getting colds often? Um, well, not necessarily colds, but maybe like it's an autoimmune reaction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they could have something like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where we're having um, antibodies to the thyroid, maybe they have leaky gut. Um, so then that situation too, we're um, trying to like really heal the gut and the immune system as well. Okay. Yeah. If you work on healing those parts, does it impact the PCOS symptoms? Definitely. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to work right on just the regular periods or just the high testosterone. Um, it could be that we need to dive a little bit deeper and see what's really going on and then working on that instead of going at it as a sym symptomatic approach to treating. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, next question. Um, what are some of the signs and symptoms uh, that women should watch out for if they suspect this might be something that they're... Um, dealing with okay so one of the big ones obviously is irregular periods right if somebody has um, irregular periods and it's something that you should definitely get tested or look out for and tell your medical doctor or um, naturopath about it so that we can get some blood work done okay um, another big one is if you have acne and so acne um, on the jawline so just this area here maybe it's on your chest or your um, upper back so that's an al also a pretty big one um, weight gain that's stubborn um, especially if you have a regular period as well then I, and weight gain so that those two combined um, is really important to check out um, and a lot of times uh, p patients have been reporting that uh, they experience anxiety and depression so that's a really big one that we don't necessarily always talk about but it's something to like think about if you ha feel like there's hormonal things going on and then you have cysts and you have anxiety and depression mm -hmm. like maybe you know we need to look into PCOS okay yeah so it really can impact the body as a whole yeah exactly not just your fertility Exactly. Yeah, right. it's um, it's uh, yeah, it's a syndrome, and there's multiple facets of it. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. What would you say are the most common 
treatment options for okay. PCOS? So this is a good question because a lot of times um, there is different ways to treat PCOS. Uh, one of the biggest ways or one of the biggest drugs that's commonly recommended is metformin. And metformin is really good because it actually helps with insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. um, and if we can get insulin resistance down, then maybe we can help with ovulation, we can decrease testosterone, and a uh, patient can ovulate and then get their period. And if they're trying to conceive, it can also help as well. So it's really important um, to talk to you know your healthcare professionals if metformin might be something for you. But the one issue with metformin is that it can cause um, some side effects with um, digestive upset. Okay. So loose stools is something that pe patients commonly um, complain about, mm -hmm. and sometimes you know metformin is not really needed if you don't have insulin resistance because there's so many facets of PCOS sometimes patients don't have insulin resistance and if we're giving them metformin it might not be the drug for them okay. but I feel like sometimes metformin is given to you know whoever has PCOS to see if it'll work mm -hmm. um, the other drug um, that's really common is spironolactone and that's used um, to decrease testosterone okay um, and so that one too is okay but there's like lots of other um, options as well and oh commonly birth control is recommended as well just to regulate periods if your period is off mm -hmm. or if you have heavy periods um, now what about some of the more natural treatments yeah so um, it really really depends right uh, maybe we should take a step back and talk about um, some of the areas of PCOS um, that we should really investigate oh like, yeah, that's yeah let's idea. talk about that and yeah. then yeah we'll go into that so <clears throat> I was telling Dr. Elena this before, but basically when someone sits down with me, I'm looking at four different things. Um, the first thing is insulin. So um, how well is, it, is the body able to process insulin when you put food into the body? So uh, we're looking at um, figuring out if the patient has insulin resistance. So basically what this means is when you, when you eat something, there's glucose in there, uh, what the body's going to do is the pancreas is going to shoot out insulin and then insulin is going to go onto the cells, hang out there, and then glucose is going to go inside once insulin is um, attached to the cell. If the body becomes insulin resistant, um, what's going to happen is the glucose, or sorry, the insulin that's sitting on the cell, now the cell doesn't even think that that insulin is there. So it's kind of confused, it's just hanging out, it's not seeing the response to insulin, and then what's going to happen is um, there's going to be an increase of blood in blood insulin and blood glucose because now the glucose can't get into the cell. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to figure out is it insulin resistance that's really driving the force of PCOS because if you have high insulin in the blood you can actually have high testosterone and then that can also impact all the other symptoms. Okay. The second one is testosterone so um, we really want to make sure A where's the testosterone coming from and B is testosterone high. Mm -hmm. So like we said, do you have clinical signs of um, acne or hair growth? And then second, is it high in the blood? Now there's a few markers that we look at. Um, the first one is DHEAS, and that actually means the testosterone is coming from the adrenal glands that sit on top of our kidneys, mm -hmm. where we secrete cortisol, which is our stress hormone. So in that case, we're really trying to decrease stress. But if testosterone is coming from the ovaries, it might be a totally different story on the way that we treat. So we're trying to figure out, okay, is it insulin, is it testosterone? So those are the two, the first two. The second, mm -hmm. or sorry, the third one is um, estrogen and progesterone. Is, are they balanced? Are we getting a good rise in estrogen in the first half of the cycle? And in the second half of the cycle, is progesterone shining instead of um, estrogen shining and having estrogen dominance type of symptoms? Um, so it's really important to like investigate those two hormones mm -hmm. as well. I don't know. You, so I'm going to cut you off yeah. just so we explain. Um, you mentioned estrogen dominance there. Yes, so why don't you just tell uh, everyone that's watching what estrogen dominance means. Yeah, so and I will come right back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lena just has to help a patient, but she'll be right back. So basically what estrogen dominance is, is <clears throat> when we have these symptoms of high estrogen um, in comparison to progesterone. So in the second half of the cycle, progesterone is supposed to shine and if estrogen is supposed to be pretty low. But what happens sometimes is estrogen can go above progesterone um, and be the hormone that's shining in the second half of the cycle instead of progesterone. And so that's when we get symptoms of um, uh, fatigue, maybe breast tenderness, uh, 
uh, we get you know PMS type of symptoms back pain um, and sometimes nausea things like that so it's really important to look at that and see you know um, is it estrogen dominant okay and then the last one that we wanted to talk about is inflammation and uh, we know that all PCOS patients they've done studies now to show that um, they have just increased markers of inflammation in the body so um, we really want to look at where is the inflammation coming from how is the inflammation affecting you is the inflammation affecting you in the, affecting you in the first place and how bad it is how bad is it um, one of the main things to look at is how well someone's able to process their foods because if they have something like inflammation in the body they could be suffering from something called leaky gut and what leaky gut is is when um, the cells in the small intestine so they're supposed to sit together like this very tight but if they open up now there's a chance for particles to get through and then the immune system gets reacted and then that's where we increase inflammation as well so we want to look at um, is there any way or any possibility that inflammation is a driving factor or is it inflammation that's being um, increased from the testosterone and insulin that um, could be there so that's really important to look at um, so yeah we're looking at these four things uh, insulin testosterone estrogen and progesterone and inflammation now uh, we were going to talk a little bit more about what like supplements are typically or what common naturopathic treatments are prescribed and so the first one is really about diet and uh, we really want to make sure that we're not um, getting these increases in insulin um, and decreases in um, blood glucose and so the so we want to make sure that the patient is on <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's okay we want to make sure the patient is we're talking about treatments okay so we're talking about diet and um so i was just saying that if it's insulin driven then we want to make sure that the patient has a low glycemic load um type of diet in okay. that situation so that's another topic we'll go into that more detail mm -hmm. later but um yeah typically we want to just make sure blood glucose is uh, managed throughout the day um, so eating smaller meals making sure your meals are rich in protein and fat um, and not giving the body too much sugar and starches um, what's your take on dairy and pcos yeah it's a good question so um a lot of times actually all the time <laughs> is, uh, it, we're taking dairy out of the diet with pcos patients now um i've looked a lot into the research recently and um, there's only a few studies that really delve into um, the link between dairy and PCOS. Mm -hmm. So they've done some studies now on um, just looking at women in Iran to see like what the connection is because they do eat quite a bit of dairy and so they saw that patients with um, PCOS in that population do eat dairy. Um, so there's basically the conclusion of the article was that there's an increased risk of PCOS if the patient is consuming dairy. The, another article went into um, if the patient is doing a low um, dairy, low um, starch um, type of diet, what would happen um, to their PCOS? And they found that all markers that impact PCOS were decreased. So high testosterone was decreased. Um, with um, this diet another they were able to ovulate um, they were able to really just balance um, their insulin resistance as well and so it's really important um, to think about doing yeah. like maybe no dairy or low dairy and in this mm -hmm. in the study it was like one ounce of dairy so it was a very mm -hmm. small amount like, it was like a block of like small cheese a day yeah okay. a day daily that's a pretty impressive um yeah. result from just reducing the dairy and yeah. starch in your diet yeah especially if you're weighing that against like your ability to conceive right yeah, exactly i think that that's a small um price to pay, yeah. I guess, is not the best term yeah. to use, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. not a big sacrifice yeah. to be able to um, conceive. Yeah, so it's really important to think about dairy. Mm -hmm. um, also, dairy can impact um, acne, right? We know mm -hmm. that dairy has um, insulin-like growth factors in it, which can increase insulin, and then that can increase androgens, which can increase sebum production, and then cause acne. Mm -hmm. So we want to look at, because um, acne is one of the bigger symptoms of PCOS that we see, so um, looking at that is important too. So commonly, most, actually all my patients do well on a low or no dairy diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, and so yeah, that was about diet. Um, another option for naturopathic treatment is um, supplementation. And it really depends on where the PCOS is coming from. If it's um, testosterone driven from the adrenal glands, we're giving adaptogens that help uh, modulate the cortisol response. So if cortisol or stress hormone is high, it'll bring it down, and if cortisol is low, it'll bring it up. So adaptogens are really great. So things like Eleutherococcus, um, ashwagandha, like all of these are really good adaptogens as we know, and can help if DHA is high. Um, if it's just plain old testosterone is high, mm -hmm. um, and maybe LH and FSH, um, that comes from the pituitary, that's also a lab that we would run. If that is high, maybe something like licorice and white peony would be good for them. Um, so that's what I'm thinking if someone's coming in with that. So um, first step, obviously, testing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if you go on my website, SaminaMitha.com, or even it's on the Sage Naturopathic website, there's a list of common um, lab tests that we would run, I think, of. Um, and that would give us a good idea of what direction we should go in in terms of treatment because um, there's a lot of information out there on supplements and what you can take, but it's really individualized based on what the patient presents mm -hmm. with. If there is um, high prolactin in the blood, we're thinking of Vitex. Um, if the patient has insulin resistance, we're thinking of something like monositol. Um, or chromium, um, if the patient has acne, maybe um, figuring out, A, where, where is the acne coming from? Is it the diet or is it testosterone? And then mm -hmm. kind of treating from there. Um, if the patient's trying to conceive, it would be the exact same workup and then mm -hmm. trying to figure out what supplements and what herbs are um, most indicated and safe um, mm -hmm. if they do get pregnant. Yeah. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it. So we went over supplements, we went over diet, um, oh, and acupuncture. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, this is a big one. Yeah. So uh, acupuncture is really, really great, especially they've done quite a few studies now yeah. with um, PCOS and acupuncture, and um, they've sound, they found pretty good success with um, doing acupuncture um, throughout the cycle, but especially around ovulation and before ovulation um, to get um, ovulation going. So they've done a study where they put electrostimulation, so just a little bit of... Oh, I've actually read yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of stimulation on um, this point that goes right over top of the ovaries, mm -hmm. um, this acupuncture point, and they were able to like help stimulate ovulation. Mm -hmm. and I've actually used this protocol in yeah. practice, and I don't do a lot of PCOS at all, but yeah. in my other practice, and the patient was pregnant. Yeah. Uh, like within a few months of treatment. Yeah, so... So it really d can be a powerful... Because she didn't tool, do yeah. anything else I told her to do. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. honest. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so honestly, acupuncture is great. It really helps to um, balance the hormones out. Mm -hmm. It helps to build that follicle up in the first half of the cycle because that's where we're building mm -hmm. yin energy. And then the second half of the cycle, we're building yang en energy. So we're really trying to um, target that estrogen and progesterone. Um, because estrogen is very much a yin type of um, hormone mm -hmm. and progesterone is very yang um, because it's a heat hormone, it helps us to uh, maintain pregnancy and um, uh, it also increases our temperature like we know when we do basal body temperature um, because after ovulation our temperature is typically on the higher side. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so if patients coming in, acupuncture is definitely um, a modality that I'm thinking of as well. Great. Yeah, let's just see if there are any, any other questions, questions that we missed. Yeah, I think you covered a lot of stuff it, for yeah. everybody. Yeah. But if anyone has any questions, why don't you tell us how we can get in touch with you if there's yeah. things we think of after this. Yeah, perfect. So um, I'm at the Sage Naturopathic Clinic in Kitchener and then also in Toronto at the Bosner Center for Health, um, just north of Young and Eglinton. Um, if anybody has any questions or would like to come in and just chat, um, please feel free to even just email me. Uh, my just general uh, email address is just info at saminamitha.com and I will pop it into the comments below and then I'll also put in um, a link to a bunch of PCOS articles that I've written about that kind of summarize mm -hmm. what we're talking about but then go yeah. into a little bit more um, in depth in terms of the information. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for thank sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Take care, everybody. Yeah. Oh, we should say in two weeks. Oh, right. Yeah. So in two weeks. Um, we're going to switch places a little bit and uh, Dr. Samina is going to interview me a little bit about um, ovarian health and uh, and ovarian cancer uh, okay. because this is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. Yep.
And so we're going to chat a little bit about that. So especially with this kind of topic, if anyone has any questions yeah. um, ahead of time, let us know. Um, you can post on this video or um, send um, an email to uh, info at thesageclinic.com. And I will um, be happy to answer those during the talk. And I mean, if you obviously, if you think of any questions during it, you're more than welcome to share it then as well. And I'll answer as much as I can. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Yeah.